Okay, okay, okay. Alright, I will make a part two, you assholes. Previously on Curb Your Clout, the Boxing Edition. This is a big win to let everybody know that Donnie Long is back. Did you get what you was looking for? No, he might want to stick around and fight on some behind the car if you like. There's only one winner, as I always say, y'all guys, you're looking at him, easy. To start this list off, oh boy, this fight here. Deverne is coming off an embarrassing loss against Deontay Wilder in the rematch. The memes after this fight was by far some of the most creative. With this fight being announced, Stavern is already talking about what the outcome is going to be and he's already throwing out his future plans of dethroning Anthony Joshua. He stated way before the fight he was training in the mountains and has racked in thousands of rounds and has ran hundreds of miles. The link to his whole statement will be in the description box. It's almost hard to believe it came out of his mouth. Fast forward, Stavern having quite of a show at the final press conference, which was started up by Joyce's trainer. There were semi-hopes that Stavern will expose Joyce, as Joyce's promoter boldly claimed that he is top five ranked material. Whatever hopes there was, all died at the weigh-in. Stavern weighs in at his all-time career high. This post on r slash boxing on Reddit just about killed me. The blatant sarcasm of this caption had me weak. Well, I can't really show you any footage of this fight since it hasn't really been a year yet. I will show through photos and describe to you what happened. Whack. This is probably the worst I've ever seen Stavern. This is an all-time low. This man looked gassed out by the opening bell. Training in the mountains, thousands of feet above sea level? I doubt that. The dude was training in the Salton Sea, for all I know. Though he lost just as embarrassingly as in the Wilder fight, somehow, in some way, he did expose Joe Joyce. From a Boxing Scene article post on Facebook, fans were so disappointed in Stavern's performance, they shared this absolutely savage meme. Not as much context needed with this fight than the previous entry. Things didn't start to get real juicy till fight week, when Brooke was constantly mentioning he was going to give Spence Jr. the chocolate brownies. He was very adamant about it. Saturday night, chocolate brownies special delivery. Yeah! Wow. I'm knocking you out. Mom, she's gonna be a fan. Mom, she's gonna be a fan. Watch what happens when I get my hands on you, bro. I don't know what a chocolate, what is a chocolate brownie? What is it? Watch what happens. Chocolate brownie. You named it that? One true fit. That's so lame. Chocolate brownie. You get cootie points for that? So Spence ends up running through Brooke after the first half and stopping him in the 11th round. After the fight, Spence savagely celebrated his win by posting a video on Twitter of him eating some chocolate brownies. During Rodriguez's media open workout, you know his father slash trainer was spectating the workout. He decided to take his camera out and film a little bit of the session, probably for social media. Rodriguez's trainer comes out, pushes Inoue's father, and tells him to stop filming. Telling him to stop filming is one thing, but trying to intimidate the man and use physical force before telling him to stop filming is completely out of line. Then Rodriguez's trainer states that everyone stared and gave him an attitude. Well, they have a good reason to give an attitude. The boxing scene in Japan is completely different from the boxing scene in Western countries. There is a much higher level of respect and sportsmanship between one and another, especially in boxing. Western fighters who do come to Japan or fight a Japanese fighter are always shocked by the level of mutual respect given from the fighter, his team, and his fans. 
So for this to happen, Manny Rodriguez and his team have sealed their fate. Though Rodriguez's trainer is the one who did these acts, he represents his fighter and the rest of the team. If Rodriguez didn't think what his trainer did was wrong, he approves of such unsportsmanlike behavior and he's doing his dirty work. Inoue smashes Rodriguez in two rounds. Though Khan was coming off a loss against Peterson, many thought he won, and his stock was still up. And this fight here was for all the marbles, plus Khan's relevancy, as this fight was for the WBC, WBA, and Ring Magazine slash Lineal Junior Welterweight title. I said never said this ever at a press conference. I will knock Danny Garcia out, and I will win the world title. Khan saw this as an easy fight and was already calling out Floyd and was already calling out Floyd Mayweather. He accused Mayweather of using steroids and went on to say he would flatten Floyd Mayweather. Also Floyd Mayweather is someone that we're looking at. I think I'm the younger, hungrier. I think I think Floyd now is he's, he's going downhill a little bit now, whereas with me I'm getting stronger, I'm going up and I think it's the best time to catch Floyd Mayweather. I swear, there is some kind of curse. It never fails whenever a fighter calls out Floyd that is nowhere close to getting a fight made with him. Bad things come their way, and this was no different. Khan started the fight well, but due to grossly biased commentary, no one was seeing the sneaky counters that Garcia was landing on Khan whenever he came in with his shots. After almost a perfectly timed shot by Garcia, which landed, Garcia did some dialing and slight adjustments and in the fourth round, Garcia drops Khan picture perfect. Khan in his mind, thinking he's fighting Marcos Maidana, assume he can just fight toe to toe and survive the round and forgets that Garcia had actual technique and it backfired awfully. Just barely 30 seconds left in the round till Khan could have a breather and regroup, he gets dropped again and Bayless waves him off. Khan was never able to recover and he was left behind and thrown up on a shelf to gather dust as guys like Danny Garcia, Lucas Matisse, Keith Thurman, and Lamont Peterson rose up into the spotlight. In the 24-7 series, Hatton and his team was watching Pacquiao's tapes and picking apart his game. Hatton criticized Pacquiao for using the same move over and over again. The right hook and roll under and straight hand. Same move, that's what I was, just, that's what I was trying to tell you. Right hook, roll under, right hook, roll under, right hook, straight off. Just gave him someone to spin off onto. And guess what? One punch shot of Manny Pacquiao's incredible career. So the 24-7 here really did paint Floyd as the bad guy. 41 1, you can fight worse. Let me go, I'm gonna talk right You can fight worse. You can fight worse. I'm gonna be something at the train. You want to shoot at the mother. When really Ortiz was the bad guy, and he got what he deserved. And I'm gonna teach you what it feels like to have that one on your record, bro. Saturday night, I won't hold my hands up. I'm gonna put you on your ass. By all means, I'm not a Mayweather fan, and this completely flew over my head upon first watching this on pay-per-view. It wasn't until later, when I had to study this fight, I picked up on these things. Like, what the shit was this guy's problem? From the opening bell, this guy was fighting straight dirty, throwing the most blatant headbutts I've seen in boxing of this decade. Floyd is not an angel himself when it comes to the way he leads with his elbow. But that comes with his style, like how some fighters tend to lead with their head. It's part of the game, but it's not purposeful to where the opponent is fighting on uneven grounds. This guy here was fighting like a straight asshole. And my gosh, this is possibly Joe Cortez's worst performance. And this was one of his last biggest fights he ref before he retired from boxing. So all these blatant fouls by Ortiz was ignored by the HBO commentators. So this flew right over the spectators watching from home. Since Ortiz was getting away with so much, the dude was pretty much like, what else can I get away with? Let me turn it up a notch. Dude straight up throws the most blatant, most animated headbutt I've ever seen on live television. He charges that shit up like Goku and jumped into Floyd's jaw, splitting the area under his lip open. 
which later he had to get stitches. Hit me with the hair button and knock on purpose. He tried it two or three times. He got hit me with the hair buttons. Hit me with the hair button a couple times. Hit me. He lunged himself with his head. Then Ortiz acted like this was his first offense and was extremely apologetic towards Floyd. Floyd saw right past Ortiz's BS, and it was at that moment Floyd no longer cared about putting on a show. The people who bought tickets, the pay per view, and wanted this fight over. This show is over. Screw you. I'm collecting my money and I'm taking my ass home. That's what was going through his head. Floyd is not the type of guy to be loading up on his shots. He rarely throws his punches with 100% power on them. But right there, he throws two of the hardest shots he has thrown in a pretty long time. You can see the rage in Floyd's eyes as he was popping these off. The dude yelled when he threw these shots, which says a lot about how much power he was putting into these shots. The second shot he threw all his weight into it and made 100% sure that shot there was going to split him right on the nerve of the jaw. Not a single soul would have gotten up from that shot. The aftermath of this fight, HBO portrayed Ortiz like he did nothing wrong, but the Nevada Commission saw elsewise. After an interview where Ortiz went off and stated he was trying to break Floyd's nose, the commission had a case that his actions in the fight was purposeful. He was fined $100,000 and had to reinstate his boxing license in the state of Nevada. My motion is to grant a license. In addition, we hold $100,000 of his purse subject to an investigation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's carried. All the drama pretty much occurred during fight week. Sullivan had literally no chill. He was putting on his best Conor McGregor performance and intimidating Lemieux and trying to get under his skin, which most fight fans thought this was going to be one crazy back and forth action Just bout. Smash your head right there in the, in the lobby. You greasy piece of shit. I'm coming for Triple G or Canelo, the winner. Saturday night, be ready. Greasy piece of shit. On fight night, I'll have to look back on my old SD cards. I'm pretty sure it was this fight. But your boy was in David's locker room to get some B-roll footage. And when I first came in, you really felt the energy in the room. Dude was straight focused and a bit angry. If this was Hajime no Ippo, homeboy already had the green glowing eyes. The music he was warming up to was a bit odd. It was something that you would hear most likely in the Godfather soundtrack. Some real eerie vibes in the dressing room. Sullivan had woken up a beast and it surely didn't take long. Lemieux made quick work of Sullivan in the first round. Maybe for the first time of his pro career. Oh, he's hurt. And it is over. Oh my goodness. Look, Zamora that... has stopped it in the first. Wow. As Michael Sullivan has no idea where he's at. David Lemieux said, I'm going to make him pay for talking trash about me. The Mayweather curse hit Rousey big time. Rousey practices boxing for a good year by a boxing coach who is more credible than Frank Dukes. And she thinks she's the absolute ish in which she forgets that her world-class skills in judo is what got her there in the first place. What made this ridiculous, she calls out Floyd Mayweather during the ESPYs, and shortly after that, she was on the cover of Ring Magazine, the most prestigious magazine in boxing, literally the bible of boxing. For fans of boxing, this was an absolute insult, and it was an insult to female boxers who were much more qualified and never made it on the cover, but Rousey did before them. Rousey becomes the first woman since 1978 to be featured on the cover of Ring Magazine. That title should have went to Cecilia Breakhouse, who was the only undisputed champion in boxing at the time, or Clarissa Shields, who became the first American boxer since Andre Ward in 2004 to win a gold medal in the Olympics. Clarissa had to do something no American boxer has done and go for two gold medals to earn her cover spot in December 2016. Rousey's a opponent was a boxer herself, a world class level boxer with plenty of achievements that Rousey's camp slept on. So Rousey and her one year of boxing training does the most unimaginable thing. She tries to beat home at her own game. 
This plan was more doomed from the start than the Bay of Pigs invasion. Holmes and justice was served in the most ironic fashion. So Hagen, or Hugen, I think it's Hagen, was trash talking Chavez for quite some time, stating stuff like he's been fighting nothing but Tijuana cab drivers. The nail in the coffin here was when he started talking trash about Chavez's fellow Mexican fans and the country itself. Hogan stated, there ain't 130,000 Mexicans that can afford to buy tickets. This angered the whole Mexican community. With Hogan, I ain't gonna have no, no pity on Hogan because I'm gonna knock him out because he's got a big mouth. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna chop your head off. And when this fight was made, 132,000 Mexican supporters showed up to witness Chavez murk this guy. And they were not disappointed. Chavez punched this guy's face in for five rounds till it was waved off. This really doesn't need any type of context at all. Literally just speaks for itself. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right over you. I'm gonna step right over you. I walk this earth like a god. You see what I'm saying? So you go back and you do your training, but then you get in preparation for what April you're gonna 9th. think you can do mm -hmm. April 9th. So after that, we all saw how this god, or demigod, fared up against Joshua. It didn't really last long at all. Okay, the most requested entry on this list. Might as well save the best for last. A lot of the context to this matchup really doesn't need any explanation. Broner caught a career-changing beating. Though, the work he did put in to narrow the scorecards really does get overshadowed what Maidana put on. All people will remember of this fight was the build-up, Broner entering the arena during the undercards, Broner's ring entrance, Maidana knocking him down and manhandling on the ropes. And lastly, the expression on his face as he was being guided from the ring to his dressing room. And on top of that, this is part two of Curb Your Cloud. What is your favorite moment? For more videos like these, be sure to like, and if you're new, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram for updates on future content, boxing news, memes, and whatever. I'm Office Hancho, and I'm out.